Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Vaughn Dalzell, making his FanDuel Hurry Up debut. What's going on, Vaughn? Not much, Greg. Thank you so much for having me. Totally excited to be on FanDuel. It's, it's a dream come true. There's going to be some good football this week, so can't wait to get to it. Not only is there going to be good football this week, there's going to be winning football this week, thanks to you, Vaughn, and your top three picks here of the week. So let's begin with your favorite pick. And that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Brady's coming off a bye or six and a half point favorites over the Minnesota Vikings, a Vikings team that certainly has been up and down this year. Why do you like Brady and the Bucs off the bye as six and a half point favorites? So there are a lot of reasons to like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this one. I know that they played a very long schedule. They're one of the longest teams to go without a bye week, along with the Pittsburgh Steelers that had all the COVID issues. But Tampa Bay had a two game losing streak into the bye week, both three point losses to the Rams and the Chiefs, two very good teams, playoff teams right now. And Minnesota Vikings have had a lot of close games. The last four games have all been single digits for them. I'm not a firm believer in Kirk Cousins, even though I know he's been playing well. But the big thing with him is he's thrown back-to-back interceptions these past two weeks. The Buccaneers' defense is nothing to sleep on. Last year, they were one of the best in forcing turnovers, but they got dismissed only because Jameis Winston was throwing too many interceptions, the most in the NFL breaking NFL records, and then you come back, Tampa Bay is elite once again on the defensive end. Throw in the addition of Antonio Brown. They have a trio of receivers with Godwin, Mike Evans, nothing to mess around with for the 40-year-old plus Brady, who needed this bye week more than anything, and then you throw in a Gronk, who just is coming off his first 100-yard game. Very impressive. He had four or five touchdowns before the final two games where they lost. He's been on a roll. Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones are trying to get this 1-2 tandem worked out for Bruce Arians. I like what I see from Tampa Bay. I know the two losses might impact some people, but this spread is probably going to move once game time comes around. And we can't forget Minnesota Vikings have allowed 24 plus points in their last three games. There are holes in the defense right now, and they also turn the ball over at an enormous rate. And you can check it up. You can look at all their numbers. It's um, it's it's worrisome when you're matching up against a defense of this Bucks caliber. And they have a lot of guys, sacks, fumbles, turnovers. So I like the Bucks to roll in this one. I'll take them by seven. I think Brady and the bunch gets back on, ta- on gets back on task with this week. The Minnesota Vikings have been very on and off, very hot and cold throughout the season, really throughout Mike Zimmer's tenure here. And facing off against the Todd Bowles defense, as you mentioned, that's really, really been good overall for Tampa Bay. It's going to be a tough spot for Kirk Cousins. Brady and the Bucs trying to make that playoff push. Same with the Vikings. It's a big game in the NFC. We'll see if the Bucs can get it done, and more importantly, get it done by at least seven. Up next, the team that everybody's talking about this week is the New York Giants. They went into Seattle and took care of business against the Seahawks, winning outright. Now they go home and are three-point dogs at the Meadowlands against the Arizona Cardinals. And you're not taking the team of the public's all over in the New York Giants. You're going with the Cardinals as a three-point road favorite. The Giants overrated or what? Man, I'll tell you. Now, Daniel Jones might come back in this one, and that's going to be an interesting aspect because if it does, the line will move right away, um, probably in the Giants' favor a little bit, but I think once the public gets a hold of this near Sunday, the line is going to move from three and beyond. It could be fours or fives, but I like the Cardinals for a couple reasons. Now, I know they peaked a little bit too early this season. They started off six and three through nine games, lost their four of the last five, um, they haven't been looking good since the Hail Mary, the Hail Murray, excuse me. But I still think that they're one of the best seven teams in the NFC right now. I think Cliff Klingsbury can get this team figured out. Now, the issue I have with the Giants is they're taking advantage of a week 2020 right now. I do know we all know that what the NFC East is looking like, but I think Daniel Jones coming back might have some question marks. They, they had to hold him back from playing against Seattle and they held them down. But Russell Wilson hasn't looked the same since the beginning of the season. Um, Arizona themselves are a pretty decent team against the spread on the road. Nine against the spread wins in their last 15 games. Home dog Giants are not very good. Only three in their last 15 at home, as you would expect. I got to lean the Cardinals, the more talented team. I think this could be the game to light the fire under them and get back in the winning column and get ready for a postseason run. Uh, the Giants can definitely can, can accept a loss here. I would love to see one. But I think the Cardinals can d- get it done. They're going to air it out. Murray's shoulder's looking a lot better. Three touchdowns last game. I'll get them by a field goal here in Meadowlands, uh, somewhere they've had success in the past couple of years. 
Kyler Murray getting healthier, very important, of course, for this Cardinals playoff push. The Giants try to hang in there in that NFC East, a division in which they are leading right now, uh, surprisingly enough. But the Cardinals, you look at the talent on that team, just more of it than the New York Giants have. We'll see if the Giants will be able to use that scheming that they did last week on defense to control Kyler Murray and this talented Cardinals offense. We'll see what Cliff Kingsbury has in store for Patrick Graham's Giants defense. You like the Cardinals as three-point favorites on the road. One last game to get to here this week, Vaughn, and that is the Detroit Lions. Darren Bevel's Detroit Lions are seven-and-a-half-point favorites against the Green Bay Packers. Things uh, really have not gone right for the Lions much this year. Of course, they did come back against Chicago last week, and maybe that wouldn't have happened in the Matt Patricia era. But it did here with Darryl Bevel. I'm not saying Bevel's going to get the job, but looked a little bit better. We'll see if they get DeAndre Swift back here this week. There's seven-and-a-half-point dogs against the Packers team that is certainly headed toward the playoffs. What makes you like a Lions team that doesn't really ever do well against Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers? So the interesting thing when I was looking at this game, the Lions haven't lost by more than seven points to the Packers since 2011. Um, that's a pretty, pretty interesting stat and a strong trend to back in this one, in my opinion. I know the Lions aren't a very sexy team to bet on, but with the coaching change, you saw that fire a little, little bit. And if DeAndre Swift comes back, I love the Lions. I mean, if you have him in fantasy, you've loved this guy all season long because he's come up as a flex or RB2. But in the in the real games, he's been just an efficient player for them, a nice change of pace back, uh, an option out the backfield. We obviously know they have receiving talent out there for Matthew Stafford. But I really want to look at the Green Bay defense in this one. They have had holes as of late, and the Packers have had a lot of close calls. Um, they were gifted a comeback with the Colts game, and they lost that one. They lost the Jaguars game, and we saw the Eagles replace Carson Wentz with Jalen Hurts and make a comeback there late in effort to try and upset the Packers. So I definitely feel the Packers have had a lot of close calls. This one could just be another one for a, te a Lions team that's done well at home against the Packers. So whether they win or not, I like the seven and a half. I think they could keep it within seven points or get a backdoor cover here. Matthew Stafford and the gang with the new head coach. The Lions have been able to keep it close. We'll see if they can do it again against a surging Green Bay team who have, had a game that was much closer than people thought it was going to be against Philly this past week. Green Bay only got it done. Hopefully, hope, ultimately, there it is, covered the spread. We'll see what they can do this week. The Lions, seven and a half point dog against the Packers. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Vaughn, you can breathe now. You did it, man. And thanks so much, Greg. It was a great show. Let's go 3-0 this week. And I appreciate FanDuel for having me on. All right. We want to thank Vaughn Dalzell for joining us here on the Hurry Up Tomorrow. Tom Becky will join us as we continue on with our DFS coverage for week number 14 and go over the top value plays on the board. For Vaughn Dalzell, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.